Y'all ever get stung so much that you get bee tired? Yeah, that's where I'm at right now. I haven't got stung in a while, so now I'm getting a little bit tired. Sometimes it makes me really energized, but today it's making me loopy and tired, so enjoy. I'm just taking a chill pill in this chair, chilling in the bee yard, just watching the bees, which is my favorite thing. But okay. We got some work to do and I have a hive that I need to show you. So, oh, don't wanna lose that. Definitely need this. <laughs> so if you guys remember back in March, I had a hive that was one of the OG bee fit colonies and they had a really, really small cluster size coming out of winter. This queen is on the verge of collapse and what I'm seeing is she literally only has probably like a hundred bees in here. So she has the smallest little brood pattern and is barely able to lay. Um, I'm afraid she will end up getting robbed out if um, I do just leave her, but again, she doesn't have enough bees to be able to build up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a newspaper over this colony and I'm gonna combine one of the splits that I did with her and take out their queen cells so that they have a queen, but also um, then this will give her a chance to be able to build up and truly become the queen she's supposed to be so small that i knew they were going to collapse so i ended up adding on a deep from the pollination hives to help strengthen them well to finish up that experiment it is doing amazing it is that hive right there and we're gonna go in it and i'm gonna show you and i'm also gonna do a mite wash on it because like i said it is a bee fit original and has not been requeened at all so this is a queen from last year Okay, so as you guys have heard me talk about before, there are hives that are really good for collecting honey, and there are also hives that are really, really good at just pretty much being brood factories. And this hive in particular is one of those that's really good at being a brood factory. Um, I do have a honey super up here, which, oh yeah, they look to be doing great. Um, they've been capping it full of honey. They're probably pulling it from those uh, apple trees over there, if I had to guess. Anybody should smoke them today. I haven't smoked any of the bees in a while. We usually don't use smoke anymore because we've been training them to get used to us, which it has been working. We generally don't have to use smoke mm -hmm. ever. But then there's days where they get angry. Like right now, they're all flooding in there. So hopefully it doesn't get angry with me today. Okay, so this hive looks mean, looks really mad. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to smoke them. Hold on. This should definitely help. Now, keep in mind guys that if you ever have um, your bees are kind of mean or you just got bees and they're a little bit grumpy, that doesn't mean that the bees themselves are mean. A lot of times, bees can be angry because of other things that are going on in their environment. It could be that you could be going through a little bit of a dearth, which is what is happening right now in Michigan. We're going through a little bit of a June dearth, which is causing them to be just a little bit grumpy. Um, and it also could be because of the weather, if it's been raining a lot, if, it, if it's been cooler. The bees are moody just like we are. So just keep that in mind, just because they're grumpy doesn't mean that they're mean bees as a whole. So, she is not laying up here at the moment, at least not in that frame. It's like they're actually bringing some nectar up here. Got some young bees. Got a nice, beautiful brood pattern. That's beautiful. Oh, and there's our queen. She's actually kind of old too. I don't know if you can see her, oh there she is, she's right there in the middle. So one of the really cool things about this hive is like I said, this hive came out of winter with literally just a baseball size cluster. And then I added on 
um, one box that had some bees and some brood on it from the pollination hives and then all of a sudden it completely exploded and both this box the second box and the bottom box is full of brood we've been using this as sort of like a brood factory for us so whenever we need to take out brood and put it in a different hive this is the hive that we pull it from whenever we make up a nuke too we've also been pulling brood frames from here um because this queen has been absolutely kicking butt. Um, so I don't know if it's just because the bees were already ramped up that we added to her. Or she just needed those bees in order to really, really kick butt um, this year. And it could also be because she went through the winter so small. So then once she was able to finally just really start laying and she had all those bees and extra workforce, it really sped her up and made her just go crazy. Um, but the experiment worked, which is absolutely great. Um, so let's see how their mite levels are doing though. Okay, so I'm going to look for a brood frame that does not have the queen on it. So last year, I decided to take some risks and try some new things in my bee yard. And one of those things, as you guys saw, is I decided in July that I, actually at the end of July, that I was going to start making a ton of splits because I came across a video by Mike Palmer about the use of using nucleus colonies in overwintering. He has amazing concepts with this, and this is something that Casey and I use. But at the time, it was way too late in the year for me to even be doing this. But nevertheless, I learned a lot from it. But as a result, my hives definitely took a hit this winter because they didn't have enough food stores and they didn't have enough bees built up in order to make it through. So, that being said, this hive in particular is a hive that really just needed to be given a second chance because a lot was taken from her going into wintertime, so she wasn't really set up properly for wintering. So, that being said, if you guys remember the character named Belana from Star Trek, I am deciding to name this hive Belana because just like Belana, she needed a second chance in order to succeed and see what she was capable of and be able to do. So far, she has been exceeding my expectations because like you see here, there are four boxes on this hive and she expanded fast. Actually, I've never seen a hive expand this quickly. So going forward, keeping that in mind, maybe when you have a hive coming out of the winter that does not have a huge, huge cluster, that might not mean that they have a bad queen. Now, I am going to keep an eye on this hive, and I'm going to keep taking notes and watching how she does throughout the winter time before I really make any big decisions on this. But so far, taking the chance on her and giving her a bunch of bees has definitely paid off. I see they are doing a little bit of uncapping here and there. So let's see, where is it at? Down here. You see that so right there it's like partially opened they're uncapping that one i don't think there's another one off to the side of it that's a good thing though okay moment of truth we got one two here let's go over here so you guys can see a little better one two Still only two. Wow, we are doing really, really good this year. I'm honestly impressed. That is really impressive. Do you guys wanna see something beautiful? Oh my gosh. Look at how white that comb is. Is that not just the most beautiful thing you've ever seen? Wow. Look at that. Look at how white this comb is. Is that not just the most beautiful thing you've ever seen? This is the OG hive that I first started with. Not the boxes, but this genetic line is the very first set of bees that I'd ever gotten. Um, I had order a, ordered a package online because I was gifted two hives and was told, hey, if you, want to, if you want to put bees in them so they can help pollinate the uh, apple trees that the guy had at his property, then you can have them. So I threw bees in them and literally the rest was history. But I literally knew nothing about bees to the point that I was looking up online, okay, how to get bees shipped to your door, which is not necessarily the way to go about it. But 
I got them from a uh, apiary down in Georgia that had shipped them up to me. I believe it was Mountain Sweet Honey. Um, and honestly, they ended up doing great. They requeened a couple times. So they're able to breed with the local genetics and they have always kicked butt. I am so impressed with them. Um, because I mean, like, look at this and we're about to see what's really going on in here because last no two weeks ago i had added in um a whole entire box so i had checkerboarded all the frames so they would start building out this box now we're gonna see if they're actually drawing it out if these genetics are doing what they normally do usually they will have the whole box already drawn out and laid in they have been notorious for how quickly they built up um last year this specific genetic of bee is the hive that I did 12 splits off of first thing in the spring. Then I did another seven splits off of them. I believe that was in June or July. Maybe it was July. And then I did, no, it was June. And then I did another set of splits off of them in late June. Those are the splits that I probably should have waited and, and not done. But each time the hive, this hive grew and built up so crazy fast. And I've also loved them because they've always been the kind of hive that will form a beautiful arc. Um, they really arrange their hive how they should be um, arranged and whatnot. Um, cause like some hives you'll go in them and they'll have like a frame of honey here, a frame of pollen here, and they just don't really have a general idea, it seems, of like how they're arranging it. So these bees organize it really well, but okay, let's, let's actually look into this and start digging into it and see actually what's going on. Like this hive seriously looks ridiculous. Um, we have been going through a little bit of a June dearth, so I won't be surprised if they aren't drawing out the comb yet, but I don't know. Judging by how this uh, top super looks, they've been pretty busy, so I might actually see some comb that is already drawn out. Ooh. Oh my god! <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna get that back up there. There's no way. I think I need to put this high back down on a uh, whew, smaller stand. This is way too high up. Here we go, we'll just do this. Okay. So last year, if you remember, I went through some life changes, I guess you could say, and I ended up having to move my entire apiary in September. Now, this is not really the ideal time to do this, but in this entire move, I was so scared that I had lost the genetic line because things got really jumbled up and I thought I grabbed the queen, but I didn't actually grab the queen. So they started drawing queen cells, but then it was too late for them to mate. So yeah. But anyways, I did end up getting this genetic line. Um, I knew the moment I saw them start to build up in spring because this is the hive that I know the absolute most. So now it's time that I share this hive with you. I have decided to name this hive Chicote from Star Trek. Yes, if you can't tell, I'm a little bit of a Star Trek fan. I grew up with it. But Chicote was the captain of the ship. He led the boat. And that is exactly what this queen has been for me across my whole entire beekeeping career. She has been the hive that I've always made splits off of. Pretty much started every single hive that I actually had. So, Bee Fit Beekeeping would not be where it is today without this hive, so I thought it was very fitting. Especially since no matter how many times I've split her, she always builds up really, really fast. There were some times that I even pushed her so far that I only left her two frames of bees and brood, and she was still able to build out that entire box, including another deep. Now, this isn't something I would recommend. I got lucky on this. These were all rookie mistakes, but she has been there since the beginning and she'll always hold a special place in my heart. Oh my gosh. They are doing great. For this much brew to be in this top box and freshly drawn comb, like they're drawing it out faster than, than you could ever even imagine. gosh and more brood and more brood and more brood and more brood <laughs> oh that's exactly what you want to see when you open up a hive though i'm also going to do a mic check on them today okay so this is the one that i checkerboarded which it looks like they're not quite drawing out yet which like i said i've been going through a june dearth so about expected they started to right here um but they're not really doing anything with that side yet and that's okay 
the yard drawn out this other side though. And this looks nice and beautiful. Got a little bit of uncapping over here, which means they're controlling for Varroa. Mm -hmm. That's something I've always noticed with these. That's why I've always kept them. And even though, yes, I have used treatments in the past, I never really treated a lot. I've never been a frequent treater. So, I'm starting to draw that side out pretty nicely. Okay, I think we're gonna use this over here for a mite check. Yes, yeah, so you can see like down here in the bottom corner, they might be kind of covering it. You can see some uh, uncapping of the cells um, down there at the bottom. And like I said, that tells me that they are uncapping brood and removing infected cells, which is a good thing. All right, got my lid, got my frame. Double and triple check for a queen. No queen. Mm -hmm. All right. That looks great. I'm still working on that frame over there. The clovers just really started blooming. I've been seeing a lot of bees foraging some clovers. Um, they they mostly bloom year round, but for the clovers over here right now. Um, that we have where we're currently located, they're really kicking off. So definitely looking forward to that flow coming in. Um, we'll start to see that shortly. That, must, that might be why they're able to start drawing comb, whereas some of the other ones are still kind of behind, but. Huh. Might be zero, let's find out. All right, well we're waiting. I'm gonna look in this bottom box. Make sure there's nothing else I need to see. No cells. We're starting to draw out some of the comb down there. So we're looking good. And they're not making a lot of uh, queen cups either. So that's also a good sign. This uh, genetic bee, I've never had problems with swarming. Honestly, there's so many times where they should have swarmed and they've never created swarm cells. So it's another reason why I've kept them. Um, the boys are really good about that and like I said they uh, build up really well. Alright, a moment of truth. Got the highball closed up. Zero. That is zero mites. Um, this hive did really well last year in terms of mite load. Um, they were always super, super low. I did treat them once last year with Formic. It was in July, but then I never treated them again. Um, and like I said, they did really, really well. They had extra stores coming out of the winter time. As you can see, they're built up quite a bit now. Um, we're actually going to graft off of her today. Um, or at least pull a couple frames so that Casey can get them ready to graft. We're going to make up some starter hives and whatnot, I believe. Which I will show you guys. So watch out for that video. That is coming as well. But, yes. I am very happy with her. But, okay, that was a nice little story on a hive that's been around for four years. Um, well, actually, that sounds kind of weird. Technically, that genetic line is four years old, but technically the hive itself hasn't been around for four years because I'm always taking splits off of her. Honestly, that hive is the mother of all of my hives and all of my buildup because every single year I've always used that hive to split off of because of how well she always came out of the winter and how well she built up and how well she came back from being split. So, yeah. But anyways, I'm just rambling now, but I'm going to call it that I'm getting a little bit loopy now because I am tired from getting stung and I need a nap. So I'll see you guys soon.